Congress just voted to refill the $320 billion into a small business loan program. Now I know we're all pretty desensitized after spending $2 trillion less than a month ago, but $320 billion, well that's a healthy chunk of change. I'm not saying this is a bad thing, I'm just saying we should treat it with more gravity than a Snapple cap fact. Huh, did you know that the US is spending more than three and a half times our annual Medicaid budget keeping a small business lending program afloat? Cool. So what did the president tweet today? Oh, oh, I bet it was super offensive, right? Well, today I want to talk about the value generated by this program and the changes it makes to the initial paycheck protection program that got off to a rocky start. So first, what is the Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP as the cool politicians call it? Well, simply put, businesses can go to a bank for a loan, and if all the paperwork checks out, the government will guarantee that loan. That means that if you can't pay it back, Uncle Sam's got the bank's back and they're going to pay it. But if you keep your employees paid and staffed, Uncle Sam's got your back and they're going to pay it. After this program was announced, every company with less than 500 employees applied for a loan. And a few with 501 employees, well hell, I'll just put it this way, they to be the 500 first employee. So all these applications were flooded again. It took only 13 days for the loan request to top $340 billion. Turns out when you dump a pile of cash in the White House lawn with a free money sign, people line up pretty quickly. The problem is, a lot of the money went to larger businesses, because of, in part, quirks in the way the law was written. 44% of the SBA loans went to 4% of loan requesters. This is why you're getting weird headlines nowadays, like Trump says he'll ask bigger companies to return emergency loans. Pretty please? So what are we doing about this? Well, good news, today's congressional funding is new and improved. Tonight, Congress is on its way to approving nearly half a trillion dollars in new aid. The Senate voted to boost that Paycheck Protection Program for small businesses. The main problem leading to this concentration of loans was the implementation of the program itself. It really heard the starting gun, fell over in shock, and promptly dropped a number due in its sports shorts. Now, I mentioned this previously, but now we have the data to actually see the effects of this failure to launch. Loans first became available to most small businesses on April 3rd, but many large banks were unprepared to accept applications when the program went live. This is because guidelines for the implementation of this program were dropped mere hours before it went live. I almost expected Mnuchin to say at a press conference, you know, if you look at the timestamp, you received your email at 11.58, so technically, we're not late. Of course, this triggered confusion amongst most banks because there were some major questions regarding independent contractor based companies and where the liability lies if a small business lies on their forms. These were no small issues. Take for example, if a small business lies on an application and the bank says, yeah, that checks out, and approves them for a government guaranteed loan, the bank should be held responsible, right? But well, what if they're getting nothing short of 100,000 applications a week and being told to get the money out as soon as possible? That's why early on we saw banks that did accept applications quickly finding themselves overwhelmed and saying that they would only work with existing customers, often those who already had loans with the banks. Exactly, the businesses whose financial information they had previously confirmed so that there was no questions or doubts about liability. Of course, which companies had most interactions with the banks? The largest companies. So they got first dibs on all the money. This flaw was ironed out about a week later when the Treasury Department said banks could skip the typical vetting process for new loans when taking applications from new customers. Hey, you won't be held accountable for business fraud anymore, but you can also make risk-free loans to people without providing background checks. Uh, oh, it's 2007 on the line, and they want their banking regulations back. Because this issue was ironed out, though, it won't be plaguing this refilled paycheck protection program. The next problem was with the banks themselves. 
I've told these bankers they should take all their traders and put them in the branches. So it's, there'll never be another opportunity to earn five points on a 90-day government, fully government-guaranteed loan. Yeah, what bank wouldn't want to lend out a ton of their money at a half a percent interest rate? Turns out, a lot of them didn't, and the implementation of theirs was super half-assed. Hey, we're getting paid no matter what. Let's just fulfill the largest loan request and get paid. They had no incentive to focus on making smaller, ethical loans. Because of this, Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, US Bank, and Wells Fargo are all being sued by small business owners who claim the big lenders unfairly favored companies seeking higher loan amounts under the government backed paycheck protection program. Each bank concealed from the public that it was actually reshuffling the PPP applications it received and prioritizing the applications that would make the bank the most money. What? That doesn't sound like something big banks would do. So why were the large loans the most profitable? Well, when you're making loans with such low interest rates, you really turn to the fine prints for profits. That's right, the four banks processed applications for the largest loan amounts because they generated the highest fees, rather than processing them on a first come first serve basis as the government promised. So how does the new bill resolve this problem? Well, of the $320 billion allocated for PPP, there's also a $60 billion carve out for community based lenders, as well as mid sized banks, which can better serve smaller businesses and minority owned firms, organizations that are less likely to have an existing relationship with a larger bank. That's right, we can all rest easy knowing that at least one fifth of the small business loans are likely to go to a small business. Let's just hope that either the public pressure generated by this lawsuit or Donald Trump asking nicely for people who don't need the money to, you know, give it back, will solve this problem for the majority of the funds still free for distribution. So those are the two major structural problems leading to this large concentration of loans to a few companies. But there were some minor ones that definitely deserve dishonorable mentions. It wasn't until April 10th that independent contractors and other self-employed people were able to apply for the loans, and the Treasury didn't release guidance on how their payroll should be calculated until April 14th. The money was completely dry two days later. The fact that independent contractors really had to buzzer shot their claims definitely contributed to the concentration of loans going to a few companies. Because guidance was eventually issued though, we can check this issue off as solved. Lastly, and this is a big one, if you were creative with your accounting, very large companies could look like they had fewer than 500 employees. The key here is what I can only imagine Wall Street stoners talk about at 1 in the morning. Dude, just what is a company? Is it like the parent company or each of the child companies? Turns out a Wall Street analyst as well as a lawyer working on SBA loan applications both confirmed groups applying at the franchise level can get under the 500 employee threshold for PPP loans. This emerged most prominently when two large automobile dealerships, employing 27 and 25,000 people, got access to small business loans by applying through local franchises. This also gives an opening to McDonald's, Subway, and all those other great small businesses we always think about. Of course, this on its own isn't a problem. Franchises need money too. The problem is we have a special program designated for small business loans for a reason. It's not just the fact that having less than 500 employees suddenly makes you ethical. When large businesses that trade on stock exchanges and have access to traditional debt and equity capital markets use the Small Business Administration Paycheck Protection Program, it drains resources from real, more needy businesses that only have access to such programs. This issue has not been addressed in the new funding bill. So that's how this new set of funding addresses the earlier flaws of a confused implementation, banks prioritizing large loans because of the oversized fees, a delayed independent contractor application form, and the ability for franchises to apply for the loans.
Let's just hope things work better with this $300 billion round than the last one. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, apply for a job at the federal government. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, first I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.